This is Radio 2UE Sydney, a member of the major broadcasting network. Eastern Standard Time is 8 o'clock. <laughs> The best-known fanfare in radio, heralding the radio event of the year. Lux Radio Theatre is back on the air. Tonight, from the stage of the Lux Radio Theatre in Sydney, Vincent Price, direct from Hollywood, to star in 1984. (music) Welcome to the internationally famous Lux Radio Theatre. Brought to you by the makers of Lux Toilet Soap. Pure white Lux Toilet Soap. The beauty care of the stars. Yes. Nine out of every ten film stars use only pure white Lux Toilet Soap. That's the secret of their smooth, glowing, radiant complexion. But you don't have to be a film star to have a film star complexion. The mild, gentle, beautifying care of Lux Toilet Soap brings new loveliness to your skin. Makes it glow with latent beauty. That's the promise of Lux Toilet Soap. Try it. Starting tonight, use only... Pure white Lux toilet soap. Now, by courtesy of the major broadcasting network, your host in the Lux Radio Theatre, Mr. Eric Pierce. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the second production in the new series of Lux Radio Theatre. Our play, George Orwell's... 1984 is headline news following a recent television broadcast on England's BBC. It is a thoughtful, powerful and sometimes terrifying story of a future groaning under totalitarian power. 1984 stirred up tremendous controversy following its English performance. To head our cast in this controversial broadcast, we're fortunate in having Vincent Price... Distinguished American star of Dragonwick, The House of Wax, and Laura. Mr. Price is about to start work on his latest film, The Ten Commandments, and through cooperation with Pan American World Airways, we've been able to fly him to Australia especially for this performance. And now, the Lux Radio Theatre proudly presents Vincent Price as Winston Smith in 1984. Nineteen eighty four. The world is one world divided into three parts East Asia, Eurasia, Oceania. Religion is abolished, God is rooted out. There is only Big Brother. Big Brother is the head of the party. Big Brother is one, indivisible, unassailable. Oceania is good because Big Brother is good. Oceania is one because Big Brother is one. Big Brother sees everything, knows everything. Everyone exists by the clemency of Big Brother. Big Brother. Big Brother. Big Brother. In Oceania, there are the proles. The proles, like the animals, are free. They have no telescreens in their houses. They have no numbers. They wear no uniform. The proles are the primitives, the early inferior people. Subdued by the party, subject to the party, they are the lost and the forgotten. Between the proles and the party, there is a great gulf fixed. A prole cannot join the party. No party member can retreat to the proles. The party is one, as Big Brother is one. Every member of the party wears a uniform, a suit of overalls. Every member of the party has a telescreen in his house. Every member of the party has a number. You there, stand up. In front of the screen. What is your number? 
6079. Your name? Winston Smith. Where do you live? Third floor, Victory Mansions. Employment in the party? Records Department, Ministry of Truth. Repeat the slogans of the party with fervor. War is peace, freedom is slavery, ignorance is strength. Now, how is Oceania governed? By Big Brother, through the Ministry of Truth, the Ministry of Peace, the Ministry of Plenty, the Ministry of Love. Describe their functions. The Ministry of Truth, News, Entertainment, Education, the Ministry of Peace, Conduct of War, the Ministry of Plenty, Economics. Well, go on. The Ministry of Love, what does that do? I don't know. I have never been there. Let us hope, for your sake, that you never do. The Ministry of Love is where people who do not love Big Brother are taught to love him. Do you love Big Brother, Winston Smith? I love Big Brother. Repeat it. I love Big Brother. I love Big Brother. Your tour of duty at the records office begins at 900 hours. Be there on time. 6079 Winston Smith. Dismissed. That was an unexpected call, wasn't it? Oh, they do it sometimes, part of the quarterly brush-up discipline, you know. Perhaps. But that fellow on the screen was probably from the thought police. They can cut in on anybody's screen, you know. They do. How do you think so many comrades have been vaporized? Thought police, of course. And the home telly screen. They can see you and hear you all the time. But I've got nothing to worry about. I stick to the party rules. I do my job. But I... you don't think the way the party thinks, do you? More important, you don't want to think the way the party thinks, the way Big Brother wants you to think, do you? I just couldn't face the telescreen any longer. I had to get out and get away. You and I. You? Well, you. I'm you, Winston. I'm the other you who looks out of your eyes. Yes, yes, you twitch my lips and tingle in my fingertips at the most inconvenient times. But they know nothing about you. They control me like they control everybody else. Then why do you do the silly things you do? What silly things? That book you bought. But it's just an old book with blank pages. What's wrong with that? Nothing. Except they don't make books like that anymore. And if they ask you where you got it, you'd have to tell them at an antique shop in the Proley Quarter. But I just wanted to keep a diary. Nothing wrong in that, is there? No, except you'd find it hard to explain why you wanted to keep a diary. And remember... You're not supposed to go into the proley quarter anyway. No, I know. The proleys aren't members of the party. They're just slaves. But will you stop it? I've got enough to worry about as it is. Yes. It's the girl, isn't it? The girl in the fiction department. Yes. Yes, the way she looks at me. The way she stays near me. She's rather pretty. What if you like that sort of thing? A lot of good it is when she wears the red sash of the anti-sex league and could be a police spy into the bargain. You're rattled this morning. Mustn't get rattled, you know. It shows. That's the way they get onto you first. Pull yourself together. There's where you work. There's the Ministry of Truth straight ahead. Smile now, Winston. Smile! <laughs> Comrade Smith. What? Oh, oh, good morning, Comrade O'Brien. Not often we meet like this. Yes. No, no, Comrade. Of course, I've often wanted to. I wanted what, Comrade? Well, I, I don't know. It's probably foolish. You are known as a great man in the party. I've admired you from a distance. I hear good reports of your work, Smith. Well, I've often hoped I, I might discuss it with a you. A pity we have no time now. Never mind. We'll meet again one day in the place where there is no darkness. In the place where there is no... I, I, I beg your pardon, comrade. Uh, good morning, comrade. Don't let me keep you from your work. The place where there is no darkness. He, he said... Never mind that now, you fool. Compose yourself. You're at work. Everybody watches. Everybody listens for Big Brother. Oh, yes. Yes, of course. But O'Brien understands. Yes. Yes, O'Brien understands. You know now that you're not alone. But smile, smile... There's that girl again. Don't let her see. Don't let her guess. Above all, not her. 6079, Comrade Smith. Present for duty. 
Repeat the slogan of the Ministry of Truth. Who controls the past, controls the future. Who controls the present, controls the past. Does the past exist? Yes. Where? In records and in memories. Which is the more important? The records. Why? The records endure, but memories fade. So? Who controls the records, controls the memory of the people. Are you impressed with the greatness of your task? I am. Then begin, Comrade Smith. This is urgent. Big Brother's Order of the Day, 17th of the 3rd, 84, contains references to unpersons. Rewrite completely. Unpersons? Oh, I have to be careful about this. Unpersons are always tricky. Even Big Brother can't refer to them. Unpersons don't exist. Oh, let's be frank. Unpersons are persons who have been liquidated, destroyed. Your job is to see that all record of them is destroyed as well. Are they mentioned in the press? Delete their names. Are they shown in photographs? Make a new photograph. Are their voices recorded? Destroy their records. And presto, they do not exist. They never existed. They have no place in memory or history. That could happen to you, too. All personnel will lay aside their work and face the telescreen for the one-minute hate. You're out of luck. The girl's sitting right next to you. Watch your step now. Make it a convincing hate. Thought police are very shrewd. You are here to hate. You are here to loathe, to despise, to detest with all your being. Whom do you hate? Goldstein. 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 Goldstein is what? Enemy of the people. Saboteur, traitor. Whom else do you hate? The Brotherhood. Goldstein and his Brotherhood. And the penalty for traitors like these? Death, 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 death. death, death. We hate traitors. We love Big Brother. We hate traitors. We love Big Brother. Speak to us, big brother. My comrades, my brothers, we live in times of great peril. We are exposed to the attacks of enemies without and traitors within. But have no fear. I am with you always. The one minute hate is concluded. All personnel will return to work. <laughs> Are you eating with anyone, oh, Smith? Hello, sir. I'm, well, no. Good. I'll join you. <laughs> I don't know what they put in this victory gin, but it always makes me do that. Yes, it is rather strong, isn't it? Excellent product, though. Excellent. You seem rather distracted, Smith. Something on your mind? What's that? Oh, oh no. Nothing on my mind. I, I was just looking at that girl over there. Yes, she's been looking at you, too. Do you know her? No. Wouldn't help you if you did, would it? She wears that red sash like a banner. It's an odd thing to say. Comes of working in the poetry department. We're editing Kipling now, you know. Quite a lot of banners in Kipling. I understand the Junior Anti-Sex League is one of the favoured institutions of the party. Oh, yes. Yes, I believe so. Uh, you're married, aren't you? I was. Oh. Divorced? Separated. Oh. With the consent of the party. It was apparent we would have no children. The party takes a very wise view of these matters. Of all matters. As you say. Funny, that girl's still looking at you. But I can't help it if she has nothing better to do. Oh, here comes Parsons. Hmm. He lives near you, doesn't he? Yes, next floor down. He's got a wife and children. You'd better talk to him. I don't think I could. Oh, hello. Hello, comrades. Hello, hello comrade. Parsons. Oh, I've been chasing you, Smith. What? Yes, it's about that subscription you forgot to pay me. Oh, which one is that? Hate Week. 
The house by house fund. We're going to decorate Victory Mansions. And two dollars you promised me. Oh, well, here you are. Thanks. Uh, I say, did I tell you about what my little girl did last Saturday? Yeah, well, she was out with the junior spies troop near Birkenstead. They spent the whole of the afternoon following a strange man. They kept on his tail for two hours and then handed him over to the patrols. Clever, eh? <laughs> what was the man doing? Nothing, he says. But my little Millie was smart. She spotted him chipping pieces off the rocks with a hammer. Must have been a saboteur. Well, uh, what happened to the man? Well, I don't know. But I wouldn't be surprised if... Uh, you know? <laughs> That's very good. <laughs> of course, you can't afford to take chances. I mean, not with subversive agents everywhere. No, no, of course. Of course. Well, I've got a few more subscriptions to chase up. I'll um, see you later. Tell me, Smith, mm. did you ever regret not having any children? And I can't say I've thought much about it. Why? I was just wondering. Parson seems very happy with his little brood, doesn't he? You see what I mean about being careful? Watch that fellow, Syme. Oh, he's clever and he never says a word out of place, but he's marked. One day he just won't come to work, mark my words. Why should I worry about Syme? He can look after himself. I'm worried about me, about that that girl. Oh, working in the same building, people are bound to see each other frequently. But for some reason, she's interested in me. She keeps turning, and why, why? It can't be sex. She's a member of the Junior Anti-Sex League. I doubt if she's from the Thought Police. Except for that diary you keep, you haven't given too much away. Well, anyway, she's not important. The important thing is O'Brien. He spoke to me today. He understands. He knows. Knows you're guilty of thought crime, that you hate Big Brother, that you... All of that and more. Everything. Don't you see? If O'Brien knows, there is hope, then. There oh. is hope. Oh, I'm sorry, I Comrade. Come I, I was looking, looking where I... I was. Wait a minute. You're the girl from the Ministry of Truth, aren't you? That's right. You've been watching me for days. Yes. But Why? I'm a good party member. Why do you have to spy on me? I'm not spying on you. All I wanted to do was to tell you... I love you. You love me? Wait. Wait a moment. She... She loves me. She said she loves me. Good evening, Mr. Smith. Oh, hello, Millie Parsons. What are you doing out so late? Mr. Smith? Yes, Millie. You're a traitor. What? I've been watching you. You're a thought criminal. Millie. Millie, get out. Go home. I'll tell your father about this. Smith's a traitor. Smith's a spy. Catch him first and let him die. Dreamy lace and silken ribbons. That's a nighty to give you sweet, sweet dreams. But don't forget, dainty lingerie must be washed after every wearing. Won't all that frequent washing harm the delicate fabric? Not when you use Lux Flakes. For silks, for flimsy laces, for all pretty things, Lux is so safe. Those tiny Lux diamonds dissolve quickly. They whisk up into rich, luxurious suds and leave your delicate fabrics flesh, clean, and lovely. For nylon, too, Lux is a must. Beautiful featherweight nylon must never be touched by anything else but Lux. Strong soaps wear it out, fade its delicate colour. Lux flakes keep nylon sweet, fragrant and fresh as new. For nylon, for satin and silk, and for soft, smooth hands, too. Switch to Lux. Lux is so safe. Your hands, as well as your dainty undies, will tell you so. A Hollywood star... Vincent Price returns as Winston Smith in Act Two of 1984. 1984. The year of Big Brother. The all embracing night of Big Brother. If you belong to the party, you are free to attend a party rally or a party discussion group or rest briefly 
or watch the party entertainers on the party telescreen. But if you are number 6079, Comrade Winston Smith, party member in revolt, loaded with the guilt of thought crime, you walk the city, the dark, narrow streets of the city, clinging desperately to those few cubic centimeters inside your skull case, which is all that is left to you of privacy, possession, and hope. The way she said love made it sound completely personal, private, indestructible. It isn't, you know. It can't be. Not now in the year of Big Brother. Love involves an alienation of something that belongs to Big Brother and to the party. Love is betrayal. Love is thought crime. It's hopeless. I refuse to believe that. It is not hopeless. There is a chance. There is O'Brien. He understands. He is in revolt, too. Yes, there is O'Brien. Hello, you've walked a long way. Remember that shop? Yes. That is where I bought the book for my diary. It's a junk shop. It's old and musty and full of useless things. But it proves something, don't you see? It proves that things were different once in spite of what the records say. And if they were different once, they could be different again. Go on. In you go. Good evening. Good evening. What, what can I... Oh, why, of course. You're the gentleman that bought the ladies' keepsake album. Is there anything special I can do for you? I was passing. I just looked in. I, I don't want anything in particular. It's just as well. The shop's nearly empty. Between you and me, the antique trade's just about finished. No demand, no stock either. That's a pretty thing. What is that? Then, no, it's a glass paperweight. Uh, what's that inside of it? Uh, that's coral. Coral? Hmm. Must have come from the Indian Ocean. They used to melt the glass onto it. More than a hundred years old, that is. It's a beautiful thing. <laughs> yes, indeed it is. Now, there's another room upstairs you might care to take a look at. Oh, yes, of course. <laughs> there's not much in it. It's just a few pieces. Well, we could do with the light if we're going up. Yeah, that's the room. We used to live here till my wife died. Now I'm selling the furniture off little by little. See, that's a beautiful mahogany bed. There's, there's no telescreen. Ah, oh, I never had one of those things. It was too expensive. I never really felt the need of it. You you don't live here now? Oh, dear me, no. I live with my daughter. Oh. She's quite a nice apartment. In the worst of days. Uh. You know, I lock up at night and leave all my memories here. Well, now, if you happen to be interested in old prints at all, there's quite a nice one over here. You know, the frame's screwed to the wall, but, but I dare say I could fix it for you if you wanted it. That's I know that building. Hmm? It's a ruin now. It's in the middle of the street, outside of the Palace of Justice. That's right. It's outside the law courts. It was bombed in um, oh, many years ago. It was a church at one time. A church? Oh, yes, yes. St. Clement Danes. <laughs> Oranges and lemons. Hey, the bells of St. Clement. <laughs> Silly of me. What's that? Oranges and lemons. That was a rhyme we had when I was a little boy. Oh. Now, how it goes on, I don't remember. But it ends up... Here comes a candle to light you to bed. Here comes a chopper to chop off your head. <laughs> the kind of dance and a game all in one. And all the names of the churches were in it. I've heard about churches, but I didn't realise I'd ever seen one. Oh, well, there's a lot of them left, really, but of course they've been put to other uses now. You, uh, you wouldn't like to buy the picture? No, no, hmm. no, no, but look... I like this room. Hmm? I might, well, I, I might at some later date want to rent it from you for a while. I'd pay you quite well. Well, I, yes, I don't see why not. You, you'd look after all my old things. I know. I, I'll let you know later then. You've been very kind. Thank you. <laughs> Pity you've got to go. I, I'm just on the verge of remembering the rest of the rhyme. Oranges and lemons, say the bells of and lemons. Winston, what? stop. Don't look round. Just light a cigarette. Oh, this is madness. Do you we... want us to meet? Yes, of course, but... Next Sunday, are you free? Yes. Then listen carefully. Now, you'll have to remember this. Go to Paddington Station. 
Take the train to Ilborn. Yes. Now, when you get there, turn left outside the station. Oh. Walk two kilometres till you come to a gate with the top rail missing. Now, follow the path and wait for me by the fallen tree. Have you got that? Yes, wait. I'll be there at 1,500 hours. I must go now. Now, don't follow me. Just finish your cigarette. But listen, you... I love you. I love you. You're picking bluebells in the country while you're waiting for a girl. You know you've taken the first step on a road that has only one end, death. And yet you're picking bluebells. I don't remember picking bluebells before. It's not in the party syllabus. Well, to hell with the party, to hell with... Hello. Oh, hello. Uh, do you always talk to yourself? Usually. It's safer. Uh-uh. It isn't really. It becomes a habit. The habit gives you away. Oh, I suppose it does. You can put your arms around me, you know. I don't bite. Uh, I don't even know your name. <laughs> Mine is Julia. Yours is... Winston Smith. I know. I found out. Now put your arms around me. Kiss me. Oh, Julia. Julia. Till this moment I didn't know what color your eyes were. I'd forgotten what a pair of lips tasted like... I'd forgotten how it felt to hold a woman. It didn't take you long to remember. Look, before we go any further, I'm 39. I've got a wife I can't get rid of. I've got a varicose ulcer and five false teeth and... and... I couldn't care less. Julia, are we safe here? Safer than anywhere. Now relax. Oh. Hold me in your arms. Mm. Mm. Now just let's be ourselves. Tell me... What did you think the night I told you that I loved you? I hated the sight of you. You must know I thought you belonged to the Thought Police. <laughs> the Thought Police? Oh, not really. Well, if not that, at least... A good one... party member, pure in word and deed. Banners, processions, games, community hikes. <laughs> and you thought if I had half a chance, I'd denounce you to the police and get you killed well, off? More or less, I... I... <laughs> it's this blasted sash that does it. The Junior Anti-Sex League. Let's get rid of it for the afternoon, huh? Julia, you're a perpetual surprise. <laughs> Not really. It's just that I've got the right appearance. I'm good at games. I was a troop leader in the Junior Spies. I do voluntary work three evenings a week for the Junior Anti-Sexers. I spend hours and hours pacing their silly posters all over London. I always look cheerful and I always yell with the crowd. That is the only way to be safe. Why did you pick me? Something in your face. I knew you could be one of theirs, but I thought I'd take a chance. Julia, I've got a place, a room and furniture. We can be there whenever we like. Mm -mm, whenever we can, darling. It's not quite the same thing. I still have to stick up posters, and you still have to go to discussion groups. But there'll be times. Where is this place? In the old part of the city where the Prolies live. It's over in an antique shop. Well... We have ourselves a love nest. Mm. Oh, but we'll have to be careful. Very careful not to give a sign. Not a flicker of recognition. We will be. Julia, have you ever done this before? Of course. Dozens of times. With dozens of men. Was it the same as with me? Not quite. You see, darling, I love you. But the others? Two reasons, darling. I like it. The party doesn't like it. You make it sound like a political act. That's why they'd arrest us if they ever found out. Love is a political act. Oh, Julia. Oh, yes, darling. Do you think it was ever like this for everybody? Like what? Being in your own room on a summer evening, talking about things you wanted to talk about. Not worrying about telescreens or thought police. Mm, I don't know. I know it's nice now. We've got another hour to enjoy it. Mm -hmm. Um, that's mm. all. Oh. Mm. <laughs> Would you like me to make some tea? Yes, please. I like this room. I like... Oh! Get out, you filthy brute! What was that? Oh, only a rat. A rat! Oh, he's a big, ugly fellow. I gave him a good fright, though. Oh, Darling. Oh. Darling, what's the matter? Of all the horrible things in the world, I, I hate rats most of all. But, darling, there's oh. no need to be upset. Oh. They're, they're ugly things, unclean things, no, but that's all. No, they're more than that. They're much more than that. Now, darling. Sure, you get now, rid of it, please. Darling, just lie please, back. Please. I'll make tea and then I'll oh, plug no, the hole. No, no, no. Plug up the hole first, please, Julia, Julia. All right, darling, of course. Julia, when I, I was a child lying lonely and awake in the dark... 
They were voices gibbering in the darkness. Their feet sc scurried closer, closer, and then retreated only to come again. They touched my face. It was more horrible than the, than the touch of a dead hand. I've never got over that feeling. Ever since that night, I've laid awake and screamed soundlessly for hours. Whenever I heard the small, pattering feet of a rat, I'm all right now. Uh, darling. Yeah. Uh, darling, what's this picture? I've seen it somewhere before. Oh, it's... It's a church, or at least it used to be. St. Clement Danes. Mr. Charrington taught me a, a rhyme about it. Oranges and lemons, say the bells of St. Clement's. You owe me three farthings, say the bells of St. Martin. Judy, you know it. Go on, please, go on. <laughs> when will you... Pay me, say the bells of Old Bailey. Bailey. I'd da, da, get the next da, da, line, but then it says, Here, and here comes, comes a candle, candle to light you to, you to bed. bed, and here, here comes, comes a chopper to chop off, off your, your head. head. <laughs> <laughs> Julian. Yes, darling. You know, I have the strangest feeling about that silly little rhyme. What sort of a feeling? As if everybody connected with it were someone who could make us happy. As if, as if I hoped the next person to recite it would be O'Brien. O'Brien? Yes. I told you he spoke to me again in the lift yesterday. He wants us to go up to his flat. Oh, darling, must we really? But he's one of us. No. He may hate Big Brother and the party and all the rest. But, darling, that doesn't make him one of us. Oh, Winston, we're two people. We make love together and we talk together and we drink tea together. O'Brien has no part in that. But don't you see, as we are now, we are alone. If we join O'Brien and his brotherhood, we won't be alone. We'll still be arrested in the long run. But that's not the important thing. The important thing to me is this room and what we do here and how we live here yes. and the joy we have. We don't need O'Brien to keep us alive. It's not being alive that counts. It's being human. And being human means you share your living and your hoping and your fearing with other people. The party is only too happy to have you share. But not the human things. Only the inhuman ones. I want to think there's a hope we could all be as human as we two are now. That's why I want to see O'Brien. <laughs> I know your names, you know mine. I'm O'Brien. We may dispense with introductions. Pardon me while I switch off the telescreen. Can you really switch it off? Members of the inner party have that privilege. We... we are... are... we are... Alone? Yes, yes, we are quite alone. I... well, Julia and I believe that there is some kind of a secret organization working against the party. We believe that you are involved in it. We want to join it and work for it. We are enemies of the party. We are... Living together, we are thought criminals. I tell you this because it puts us at your mercy and you will know that we are telling the truth. If you wish, we will sign a statement. There is such an organization. Its leader is Emmanuel Goldstein, whom you know of. Yes, but we thought we were afraid that Goldstein and the, and the conspiracy were invented by the thought police. No, they exist. But what are you both prepared to do to help the conspiracy? Anything we are capable of. You are prepared to give your lives? Yes. yes. To commit murder? Yes. yes. To betray your country? Yes. yes. To cheat, forge, blackmail, corrupt the minds of children? Yes. yes. You are prepared to commit suicide if ordered to do so? Yes. yes. You are prepared to separate and never see each other again? No! It's just as well to understand these things right at the beginning. You understand you'll be fighting in the dark. You'll receive orders and obey them without knowing why. Sooner or later, you will be caught and tortured, and you will die. You will never know whether your work has served a single good purpose. We and you now are the dead. Our only true life is in the future. A thousand years away, perhaps. But if in that thousand years we extend the frontiers of sanity even a little, we shall have done well. Uh, uh, you have a hiding place? Yes, in the old quarter, a room over an antique shop. The proprietor is called Charrington. That will do for the moment. Later, we shall make other arrangements, give you more definite instructions. Now it is time for you to leave. Then we are accepted? Yes, you are accepted. Oh. Have you any more questions? Only one. Do you know an old rhyme called The Bells of St. Clement's? Yes, I think so. Oranges and lemons say the bells of St. Clement's. 
You owe me three farthings, say the bells of St. Martin. <laughs> when will you pay me, say the bells of Old Bailey? When I grow rich, say the bells of Shardy. You know it, you know it, you know all of it. I told you he'd know it, Julia, didn't I? Oh, Julia. Oh, what, darling? Is there any time to get up? Oh, I don't want to get up. Oh, neither do I. <laughs> you know what I was remembering just then? Hmm? No. Do you remember that thrush that sang to us the first day in the wood? No, he wasn't singing for us. Just for himself. <laughs> Not even that. He was just singing. That's what I mean. I wonder if we will ever see the day when we'll be just, just singing. No, oh, I doubt it. What did O'Brien say? We are the dead. We are the dead. You are the dead. It, what? it came from behind the picture. Huh? Behind the picture. Yes. <laughs> oh. Now you can be seen. You are the dead. The telescreen behind the picture. Julia! Stay where you are. What? Don't touch each other. Cross your hands behind your heads. Now stand back to back. Oh. I suppose we may as well say goodbye. You may as well say goodbye. And while we're on the subject, here comes a candle to light you to bed. Here comes a chopper to chop off your head. Mr. Challenton. No! Vincent Price's leading lady in his latest film, Columbia's The Mad Magician, now showing in Sydney, is radiant, youthful Mary Murphy. Mary's a typical outdoor girl. She likes horseback riding, ice skating and swimming. She loves to feel the sharp sting of fresh air against her cheeks. And yet her skin is smooth, satiny and glowing. How does she keep her complexion free from the biting damage of water and wind? Mary Murphy says... Lux Toilet Soap Care makes a wonderful difference in my skin. It makes skin look softer, dewier. You'll find it will make you lovelier, too. Like nine out of every ten film stars, Mary Murphy uses only pure white Lux Toilet Soap. She knows she can trust the beauty of her complexion to Lux Toilet Soap because it's so mild, so gentle. That snowy whiteness is the outward proof of its great inward purity. Follow the advice of lovely Mary Murphy... Use only pure white Lux toilet soap and you too will have a glowing, radiant film star complexion. That's the promise of Lux toilet soap. And now, Act Three of 1984, starring Vincent Price as Winston Smith. <laughs> The year of the revolt of Winston Smith against Big Brother and the party of Big Brother. It had been a bloodless revolt. Bloodless and small and secret in a mahogany bed in a fusty upstairs room. The issue had been decided before the thought was conceived or the act begun. But even now, Winston Smith had no certainty where he was. His world was a windowless room with walls of white porcelain flooded with light from hidden lamps stark under the scrutiny of four telescreens from which every motion was visible. He was more lonely than he had ever been in his life. And yet, he was not alone. Can I talk? There are still the telescreens, Parsons. Oh, I don't mind those. I have, I have nothing to hide, nothing at all. Well, what are you in for? Thought crime. You wouldn't think it possible, would you? You don't think they'll shoot me, do you, old chap? I, I mean, they don't shoot you if you haven't actually done anything. I know they give you a fair hearing. They'll know my record, won't they? You know what kind of a chap I was. Not brainy, of course, but keen. I'll get off with five years, don't you think? Or ten? A chap like me could make himself pretty useful in a labour camp. Are you guilty? Oh, yes. Oh, yes, I'm guilty. You don't think the party would arrest an innocent man, do you? Thought crime is a dreadful thing, old man. It's insidious. Do you know how it got hold of me? In my sleep. Yes, that's a fact. 
Never knew I had a bad streak in me, and yet there it was. How did you find out? I started talking in my sleep. <laughs> they heard me shouting down with Big Brother. Who denounced you? Well, actually, it was my little daughter. She listened at the keyhole and heard it, nipped off and told the patrols next day. Pretty smart, eh? And she's only seven. But that's the sort of thing I mean. They'll understand that I train my children properly. They'll take that into consideration, won't they? Parsons? Yes. Yes, just tell me what you want done. I'll cooperate. You won't have any trouble Room with me. Room 101. Oh. Yes. So, you're alone again. <laughs> alone except for that whimpering thing in this gleaming, aseptic world of the Ministry of Love. It's not a new experience, this solitude. You're not too afraid, are you? Yes, I am afraid. I am afraid of this procession of frightened men with broken bodies and terrified eyes. I don't know whether that's part of the treatment, too. Yes, it's all part of the treatment. Keep reminding yourself of that. The lightest word, the least calculated gesture is all part of the treatment. There is no mercy, there is no kindness, there is no intermission of misery. It is all part of the treatment. Come on, you. We can't wait any longer. Me? No, not you. This. Come on. On your feet. Where are you taking me? Room 101. No, no. Don't do anything but that. You've been starving me for weeks. Finish it off and let me die. Shoot me. Hang me. Take my family in and cut their throats. But don't take me there. Room 101. No. No. Mm. Smith. Mm. Take your hands away from your face. Oh. It's forbidden to cover your face in the cells. Take hold of yourself now. That's part of the treatment, too. Everything's part of the treatment. Mm. But so long as you still have those few cubic centimeters inside your skull, you're still a man. You're still stronger than they. Hello, Smith. O'Brien. Oh, That's right. So they got you, too? Oh, they got me a long time ago. You mean you are one of them? Don't deceive yourself, Winston. You knew this a long time ago now, didn't you? You've always known it. I, I, I... I told you myself we should meet like this. In the place where there is no darkness. Now that we have met... We are going to make a new man of you, Winston. A new man. Take him! You see how it is, Winston. Pain itself and suffering is no longer a chance or accident. It is a calculated process of being measured and graduated and controlled. We are not medieval butchers probing for the nerve roots. We are masters of this most subtle of sciences. Look, there is a dial upon which your agony is measured. There is a lever by which I can increase or diminish it. But it is not I who inflict this pain on you, Winston. It is you yourself. You understand that, don't you? You have always understood that. Winston, you are suffering the pain of the the rebirth of sanity. You must be born again. You know that, don't you? Look at my hand, Winston. How many fingers do you see? Two. And on this hand, two. put them together. Two and two. What does that mean? Four. And if the party says two and two, make not four, but five. What then? There is still four. How many fingers, Winston? Four, four. What else can I say? Four. How many fingers, Winston? Four. Stop it. I'll give you four. Four. How many fingers? Five. Do you know where you are, Winston? I don't know. I can guess. In the Ministry of Love. Do you know how long you've been here? I don't know. Days, months, years. Why did we bring you here? To punish me, to make me... Confess. No, Winston, not that. Yeah. Not the small tasks of punishment and confession. <laughs> what could you tell us that we don't, don't know already? What satisfaction do we draw from your stricken flesh? 
shall I tell you why we brought you here? Mm. To cure you. Cure me of love for a woman. Love. Love is a word, an obsolete word. There is no love. Only a biological act. Cure me of what, then? A false and foolish thinking. Yeah. We don't want martyrs, Winston. We want disciples. Yeah. Willing disciples. Yeah. And when we made you a willing disciple, then we shall destroy you. Uh, and why do you go to, to the trouble to torture me? Because you are a flaw in a pattern, Winston. You are a stain that must be removed. But you, you've not told me why. Why? No, Winston. Uh, you must tell me why. I the answer to that question is the measure of my whole success with you. It may be the key to your release from this small prison of great agony. You tell me why, Winston. Why do we do all these things? You, you are, are ruling over us for our own good. You believe that human beings are not fit to... Ah, stupid! Stupid! Stupid, Winston! You deserve an eternity of pain for a folly like that. Now I will tell you why. The party seeks power for its own sake. We are not interested in the good of others. We are interested only in power. Not wealth or luxury or long life. Only in power. Pure power. No one ever seizes power with the intention of giving it up. Power is not a means. It is an end in itself. The object of persecution is persecution. The object of torture is torture. Each is an exercise of power, a pressing upon the nerve of agony, until one after another, all men are converted to our discipline. All men are submissive to a universal power. You'll never do it. You'll never do it. Never. Never. We did it to you, Winston. Shall I show you in a mirror just what we have done to you? Shall I tell you that you're just a bag of bones? That you've lost all semblance of a man? That your hair and your teeth are falling out? That you are an offense to sight and to smell? We did that to you, Winston. Now, two and two make cry! But I never betrayed you. You failed there. You couldn't make me betray her. You couldn't. You, you failed, O'Brien. You failed. You, 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 you failed. No, we never yes, fail, you Winston. Yes, never. Yes, we cannot afford yes, to fail. Yes, Take him to room 101. <laughs> This is the end of horror. This small room down in the bowels of the earth. I'm strapped to a chair. Tightly, so tightly that I cannot move. I cannot retreat inside my skull case. That does not belong to me anymore. It has been entered and possessed and garrisoned by O'Brien. There is no retreat left anymore. I am faced now with the ultimate agony. I am in room one. Oh, one. You asked me once, Winston, what was in room 101. Mm -hmm. You knew the answer, though. You wouldn't admit it. No. Everybody knows it, really. Mm -hmm. The thing that is in room 101... Mm -hmm is the worst thing in the world. Mm -hmm. The worst thing in the world, of course, varies from person to person. Mm -hmm. For some, it is burial alive. Mm -hmm. For some, it is death by fire. Mm -hmm. For some, it is quite a trivial thing. Mm -hmm. In your case, Winston, mm -hmm. it is... Rats! Oh, oh no. Oh, 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 take them away. Keep them away from me. You, you can't do this to me. You can't do you this. You have not to yet me. surrendered to me, Winston. How can I surrender if I don't know what you want? I've answered all the questions, haven't I? I I've learned all your lessons, haven't I? Take them away. Please, take them away. The rats are starved, take Winston. They will eat a man alive. I can use them on you, or I can use them on Julia. You have your choice now. Which? Use them on Julia. 
I don't care. I don't care what you do. But don't let them near me. Don't. 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 Let Julia suffer now. Let her. Yeah, now, Winston. It's over now. There isn't any more. It's all over now. <laughs> There is a calm, a great pervasive calm. You sit at your corner table in the cafe and fumble with the chessboard and sip your victory gin and scan the newspapers. You look out the window and watch the people go by. One day, Julia passed, and something stirred in your mind for a moment and then died again. There are so many people, and this small corner which they keep for you is warm and comfortable. When you finish the newspaper, you watch the telly screen. Strange, that. In a life without struggles, without any hint of climax, that is the moment that comes nearest to emotion. The face of Big Brother flashes on the screen. You hear his rich... Full voice. My comrades, my brothers, we live in times of great peril, but have no fear. I am with you always. My care and my love reach out to you, wherever you are. And we love you, big brother. We love you. We have erred. We have been punished. And you have taken us back. We love you, big brother. Love you. Love you. Love you. Our star, Vincent Price, will join us in a moment. While we wait for him... Blue eyes, brown eyes... Redheads, blondes, and brunettes. There are beauties of a million varieties, but any beauty expert will tell you this. A woman can only be truly beautiful if she has clean, gleaming white teeth. White, sparkling teeth must be free from the dingy film which gathers on them after every meal, hiding their natural brightness and harboring decay-causing enzymes. To remove this dulling film, use Pepsodent. Pepsodent is the only toothpaste containing irium, the wonder ingredient that wipes out film instantly and completely. Pepsodent gives you the brightest, whitest teeth. The nicest, most radiant smile. And Pepsodent tastes just fine. That cool peppermint flavour is the right flavour for everyone. Buy the large economy size Pepsodent, the family size that saves you money. Make Pepsodent your one regular toothpaste... ...starting from tomorrow. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to remind you... ...that all Australian artists appearing in tonight's production... ...are eligible for the Lux Hollywood Award... ...which, at the end of our year of broadcast... ...will take the Australian actor or actress... ...judged to have given the best performance... ...on a luxury flight to Hollywood... ...in cooperation with Pan American World Airways... Pan American will fly the winning artist to California by luxury president service with stopovers at Fiji and Honolulu. And while in Hollywood, he or she will be heard coast to coast in Canada and the United States on a broadcast of the American Lux Radio Theatre.
The Lux Radio Theatre is produced by Sterling McAvoy. 1984 was adapted from George Orwell's novel by Morris West. Tonight's play was directed by Paul Jacklin. Heard in our cast were Lionel Stevens as O'Brien, Alexander Archdale as Charrington, Guy Dolman as Parsons, and Dorothea Dunstan, Gordon Chater, Rupert Chance, Murray Powell, Leonard Bullen, and Alan Herbert. David Netheim was heard as the narrator. Margot Lee played the role of Julia. And as Winston Smith, you heard our distinguished Hollywood star, Vincent Price, who returns to our microphone now with Eric Pierce. Well, congratulations, Vincent, on a really splendid piece of work. Thank you, Eric. If anybody had told me a month ago that I'd be starring in a radio broadcast in Australia, I, I just wouldn't have believed him. Well, you certainly got here in double quick time. Oh, you know, there's really nothing to it. Those Pan American Clippers are simply wonderful. You just step in at Los Angeles, have a few drinks, and uh -huh. step out in Sydney. Very nice, too. And did you stop over on the way here? Oh, yeah, I almost forgot that. We had stopovers in Honolulu and Fiji. You know, I wrote all of my friends back home. Well, how often do you have a chance to write letters from the Fiji Islands? No, I <laughs> Not very often. Uh, tell me, Vincent, uh, what's next in your itinerary? Well, Eric, next month I'm uh, starring at Paramount in Cecil B. DeMille's new color version of the Ten Commandments. Oh, yes. I read only recently that they've uh, had an advance unit out in Egypt for six months waiting for the right sort of thunderstorm so they can <laughs> film the passage of the Red Sea. I think they ought to come to Sydney. <laughs> yes. Uh, it's certainly, uh, the film certainly should be spectacular. Well, if I know Mr. DeMille, it's going to be spectacular. <laughs> About your current film, Vincent, that's uh, showing here now. Oh, you mean the mad, mad magician. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, you aren't the only magician in that film. Oh, why not? Well, there was a young lady in it who quite bewitched me. Ah, oh, you mean Mary Murphy, my leading lady. I do. She's really lovely. Well, of course she's lovely. She's a Lux girl. You know, there are plenty of beautiful stars in Hollywood, and they all use Lux toilet soap. Ha-ha. <laughs> Vincent, I can see that we must have you back again. <laughs> well, you have only to ask. Tell what are me... your future plans on the uh, Lux Radio Theatre, Eric? Sorry. Well, well uh, next week, our star is a fellow countryman of yours, uh, Melvin Douglas. Oh. Uh, he's out here playing Time Out for Ginger at the Princess Theatre in Melbourne. You know, Melvin is one of my very favourite actors. I'm sure you're going to have a wonderful, exciting show. Well, Vincent, it's been fine having you here, and we'll all be looking forward to seeing you in The Ten Commandments. Goodbye, and have a wonderful flight home. Goodbye, Eric, and goodbye, Australia. One week from tonight, Lever Brothers, makers of Lux Toilet Soap, Lux Flakes and Pepsodent, invite you to tune in when we present Accent on Youth, starring Hollywood star Melvin Douglas in person. Until then, this is the Lux Radio Theatre, signing off from 50 stations throughout the Commonwealth of Australia. <laughs> <laughs>